One of the long-term goals of our research here in the biology department at the University of Florida is to understand how the genetics and the environment of animals influences how rapidly they age and how long they live. With funding from the National Science Foundation, I supervise a team of nine people, and what we'd ultimately like to be able to do is shed some new insights into how both the genetics and the environment of organisms uh, influences how long they live and how long they can stay healthy throughout life. So the process of our research involves a lot of work with what we call model organisms. And so it turns out that aging and longevity in humans is actually very complex. Um, humans are extremely diverse genetically and it's very hard to control their environments. And we can't do genetic experiments on humans. And then lastly, humans live very, very long. So for all these reasons, we can learn a lot about the fundamental aspects of these processes by using much simpler organisms with ha that have short lifespans um, that we can grow in an, a lab environment and very tightly control their environment. And so for, for many reasons, the, one of the model organisms that is best for this is a tiny little nematode worm called Cenorhabditis elegans. They're only about one millimeter long, and we can grow them in large quantities very rapidly in the lab. Uh, they typically only live about two to three weeks uh, in terms of their lifespan. And they've been used in laboratory settings for 40 or 50 years now, and there's a whole range of different tools that are available for manipulating uh, individual genetic pathways and then studying how that influences the aging and longevity processes. A lot of what we do with these nematodes is we use uh, genetic screening tools to, to screen the more than 20,000 or so genes in this organism and trying to find ones that, that influence uh, how cells repair themselves and, and many of those genes then ultimately uh, affect the aging process and longevity. So to understand the impact of our research, what I should first explain is that um, when manipulating uh, the genetic background or the environment to increase longevity or decrease aging, what we often see is a trade-off where you see reduced developmental growth and reduced reproduction. And so what our research has been focusing on is understanding how these two are linked within animals. And so what we've been able to do is, is find some new genetic connections between increasing aging and longevity and decreases in, in growth and reproduction and to provide insight into how those two are interacting. And so eventually with this new information, what we hope to be able to do is to inform future potential therapeutic uses of this information to safely increase longevity and reduce aging, but not have the consequences on, on important things like reproduction, development, or growth.